Hello, I'm Michael Dykes with the International Dairy Foods Association, and I'm here to give you a sneak peek at some of the provocative topics we will be discussing at Dairy Forum 2018. Joining me today is one of our general session speakers, Zachary Carabell, an expert on global economics. He has studied the interconnectedness of the world's financial markets and does a great job of explaining how the economic environment affects American business. Zachary, welcome. Thank you. President Lyndon Johnson is famous for saying he was looking for a one-armed economist because he just wanted straightforward economic forecasting. You tell us the tools that you use to measure economic growth in his day do not even begin to be an effective measure of today's economy. Why not? So, you know, our numbers, our suite of numbers that everybody refers to, and I think all of us are generally aware of things like GDP and inflation and unemployment and, and these numbers that kind of inform our, our map of are we doing well or are we doing badly. So we make up all these numbers, and they're all set by about 1950. What's the economy in the 1950? It's uh, in the United States. It's us, ma us making a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and selling it to ourselves and the world. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the economy, making stuff, selling it to ourselves and the world. Mm -hmm. So we're really good at measuring an economic system that makes a lot of stuff that we consume and then sell to the world. Mm -hmm. But that's not the economy, that's not the nature of our, our economic systems today. And like so many other aspects of human society, we're essentially relying on a 1950s roadmap mm -hmm. to navigate us through an early 21st century world of roads, many of which just didn't exist in the 1950s. Well, if GDP, inflation, and unemployment are no longer effective, what indicators should we be using? So, we're not going to come up with a new set of public indicators anytime soon. We, we've got the lattice that we've got, and we're stuck with it. And I think that's going to be true for a long while. But if you're running a company, if you're in a business, if you're in the dairy business, the amount of information, whether you're a farmer, whether you run a local collective, or whether you're a CEO of a major international, the amount of data that you can assemble at your fingertips to try to figure out prices, trends, where are your customers, what do they need, that you can get all of that at your fingertips more rapidly, or you can get your staff to get it more than you ever could before. That's interesting, because we have so much information today. So as, as a business leader, how, how does a business leader know what information is valuable and what's just noise? I think a lot of what, what you see at your own business level from what your customers are doing is going to tell you more about the world you're in than a lot of these big numbers. Interesting. Another important area for the dairy and for our dairy industry is international trade. We live in the most incredible expansion of, of human consumption still than at any point in human history. And, and we're, we're in the middle of it. We're not at the end of it. Middle class is still growing massively globally, even if it's stagnant in the United States and Western Europe. And that means that the United States in particular at the epicenter of this. We still sell an immense amount abroad. And a lot of that comes back to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is much more complicated than, you know, I produce milk here and I sell it there, or I buy milk from there and I consume it here. Um, so much of what we buy and sell, whether it's a simple agricultural good or a complex good like the iPhone, has components from multiple countries, has inputs from multiple countries. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't even begin to measure that in our trade numbers. When you're running a business today, it is so dynamic and so fluid and so rapidly changing. You know, think about the, the agricultural industry, dairy industry in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. 1,900, 20 plus percent of the population is in agriculture mm -hmm. and produces a pittance in the amount of food and output that two million people involved mm -hmm. in agriculture do today because technology has totally changed the nature of the game. You know, you have computer chips on your milkers. You can, you can figure out the yield. You can figure out the entire chemical composition. You can correlate that to the feed, to the diet. Mm -hmm. You can correlate that to consumer taste. None of that was true 10 years ago. That completely changes how you manage and, and what you do. What opportunities does that present for our dairy industry? So it's fascinating. One of the things you see as a really hard and fast correlation is that the more income and affluence people have, the more protein they want to consume or that they do consume. It's also true they, they want washing machines, but that's irrespective mm -hmm. of this conversation. So in a place like China 20, 25 years ago, almost no dairy consumption uh, and very, very little protein or meat consumption. As you've had a much more affluent Chinese middle class, you've had dairy, yogurt, different products, much more meat. So you see everywhere in the world, this is true in India as well, obviously the composition of it's a little bit different because of the, you know, the sacred cow, literally yes. the sacred cow. But you do have 
a, an unequivocal trend that as people have more money to spend, mm -hmm. their dietary desires mm -hmm. shift, and they shift in the direction of higher protein content, uh, higher animal protein content. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we may eventually get to a more vegetarian world, but right now, what you have is, is a desire for more animal proteins. And that changes diets and it changes industries. And China's a really illuminating path. I mean, this is a culture that really was not at all focused on dairy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've just had in incredible, incredible growth there. And, and you would you see similar trends in every other country that's ex experiencing that affluence. And that is as close to a de facto market for this industry as you can find. Sounds like great opportunities for a dairy industry. Yeah. Zachary, thank you for joining me today. I, I look forward to hearing more about your how you think differently about the economic indicators in the 21st century, uh, and look forward to hosting you at the Dairy Forum. I'm looking forward to January of 2018 in Palm Desert. Can't beat that. I urge you to attend the Dairy Forum in January so you are part of the discussion about how our industry will shape the future. I look forward to seeing you in Palm Desert in January. <laughs>